Well, welcome back to the Stadium of Light. Sunderland won five goals to nil against Morecambe. And uh, alongside me is Danny Collins. We're going to look back through the action, but Sunderland right back on song tonight. Yeah, they were, weren't they? And as we said, we, we'd expect them to come out and be bright from the, from the first whistle, really. And they were, you know, three or four corners in the first couple of minutes, right on the front foot. And you see there, Broadhead, opportunity early on. Keeper managed to, to get the saving round there, round the post. But the one thing, so no negatives to come out of it, on the counter-attack once or twice, we did look a little bit shaky, a little bit unorganised, but we've, we've come away with a clean sheet. But let's get back to the goals, and here's the first one now, Lyndon Gooch. Playing it left back again this evening. Does well down that left hand side, just chops there and just does his man. Little dummy there, cuts back the other way and fires a lovely little low cross in for, for Ross Stewart, who's on the move. Gets across his man and he gets us on our way. And there's another look at it now. And you see, just keep your eye on Ross in the middle there when he comes into the picture. There he goes now, he's on the move. Centre half's flat footed, Delaney just gets that yard on him, it's all it needs. And you see the goalkeeper not too happy with his back foot. And here's the, here's the second goal now, we work it well across the pitch and that's where we got a lot of joy tonight for me when we moved it across the pitch, they were too narrow Morecambe at times. And there's Lyndon Gooch again on his left foot, again, stands this one up, Nathan Broadhead, I know from our point of view if I'm in the Morecambe team there or on the coaching staff I'll be questioning me, me lads in the middle, asking them what's going on, you see there, just keep your eye on Broadhead, just pulls off his man there and then he finds himself Still has jumped quite high, doesn't he? He has got a good leap on him, to be fair. He's not the biggest, but he's got a good spring. But, but when you're six yards out, you, you know, he's got four or five yards of space, you've got to be questioning that from a Morecambe point of view. And then this one here, Dan Neal, um, we were at the short corner, Morecambe again switched off, they've got bodies in the box, no one goes out to press him. And he just bends it past that far post. But here's their best opportunity of the evening. It's a lovely ball in, to be fair. And uh, the man coming in is it will dig, isn't it, at the far post. Just keep... just catches Lyndon Gooch napping a little bit and he can't keep it down and fires it over the crossbar. This one here, Colt uh, Stockton, he's offside in the middle, isn't he? There, danger man. We did keep him quite quiet all, all evening. He was feeding on scraps, but he's way offside there. Jack, you have a good game? Yeah, he did in fits and starts. He did. He's getting better in terms of decision-making for me. You know, yeah, he's got his goal again tonight, big deflection, but just that decision-making with him, when to, when to take one or two touches rather than three, four, five, get his head up early and, 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 you know, make the pass there. He cut it back for, for Ross Stewart, who unfortunately just couldn't quite sort his feet, uh, excuse me, feet out Ross and puts it past the post. But, um, yeah, we, we had, a, in that first half, we had a little four or five minutes where we came off it. And in terms of that, I mean, we, we stopped doing the basics well, what we do, what got us in good positions, but we got back on it and then started the second half again. Now, you see Ross there, he does well, just gets that big leg in at times, doesn't he? But it looks like it's yeah. getting away from him but the keeper's out well to, to spread himself and, and gets the blocking. Dan Neal just working it out to the yeah. outside there and, and gets it back, and look at this pullback. third now, isn't it? Dan, he does well, he gets in there, he doesn't panic, Dan, you know, he's got good composure, hasn't he, for a young lad, and he gets his head up and pulls, uh, pulls it back to Pritchard there, who's, what is he, about 14, 15 yards out, and he just, a good firm side foot past the goalkeeper at his near post. Whether he's unsighted or not, I'm not sure, he'll be, you know, you can see the goalkeeper there, he's almost looking after his near post, and when it comes back to Pritchard, He's, he's in that area, but whether it's come through bodies, I'm not too sure, but it, but it beats him, and as you said, I think that's Pritchard's first home goal for us, isn't it? And this one here, yeah, that's, again, Stockton, as we are saying there, he's feeding on scraps, just getting away from him there, you know, he's got to stretch for it, he's got to try and generate some of his, his own power on it, and it's comfortable for Hoffman. And there's the, there's the fourth now, is it? Broadhead, he's onto the loose ball, and once he gets into these areas, he comes alive. You know, he's, he's trying to shift it, he's trying to work a yard, and that's what he does. And when he does, bang, fires it past the goalkeeper again. And that's his second goal of the evening. And he came off the near few minutes after Pritchard, uh, sorry, Broadhead, and he'd perhaps be disappointed, thinking, I can I can get a hat-trick here tonight, he'd keep me on gaffer, but I can see why Lee Johnson's brought him off, wants to keep him fresh for the weekend, because, you know, we don't want to be picking up any daft injuries. We've seen, Lee, uh, we've seen Ross Stewart get... Get a little nick there, didn't yeah. he, late on there. You know, thankfully he's OK, but that's why I can see he's brought the two strikers off. I think this one, is it Dan Neal gets in? Yeah, I think in there can Dan hit it, but to be fair, the centre-half comes out and it just doesn't drop for, for Benji Kimpioka in the six-yard box. But here's the fifth one. Again, we work it well across the pitch. So in Kimpioka, he's involved, he's bright. Link-up plays, looking for a little give-and-go with O'Brien. O'Brien plays it out to Diaku, gets the shot away, and it's one of those you don't you don't shoot, you don't score. And 
gets the shot away, big deflection off uh, the skipper O'Connor, yeah. and it loops up and over the keeper, who's got no chance with it, and there, as I say, that caps off a, a good night's work. See it again there, keeper's just hoping it goes over the bar, <laughs> and it doesn't, and there, uh, no, we were saying there, do we keep going for goals? Do we go for number four? Do we go for number five? And the lads did, to be fair to them. Yeah, we had a little spell where it was quiet in here, and we, we almost just took the sting out of the game and, and played in, in uh, autopilot, really. But then we kicked on again, and I'm sure you asked, does it come from the players yeah. or does it come from Lee Johnson? And it's a bit of both. For me as a player, if I'm a centre-half out there tonight, I'm saying, lads, you know, you smell blood. Let's let's stick the sword in, so to yeah. speak. Let's go and get more goals. Yeah. Let's get some goal difference back. As you mentioned there, we're way behind the other sides are in double figures. So we've we, we've made that up a little bit tonight. And the lads getting in the change rooms there with the clean sheet behind them. Five goals on the board. You know, they'll be feeling good about themselves this evening with another home game to come at the weekend. Yeah, thick and fast here at the Stadium of Light. Uh, can we have a look at the latest scores? No, we're going to do an Ask Danny first. OK, sorry, couldn't hear that production team. Uh, this is says, impressed by Cole Stockton tonight in a poor team. His goals record is excellent. Is he someone we could look at in January to bolster our attacking options? Yeah, well, I, th I think he said it there, you know, impressed by him in a poor team. And, you know, they are. They're a team that have just been promoted. I think if you were saying at the start of the season, where would you expect them to be? I'd say in and around a dogfight at the bottom of the league. And that's where they are. But he's top scorer in the league. So you've got to have a look at that. And I think he's right there as well. I said that he was feeding on scraps. He had one or two half chances, but I think he puts himself about. He's quite strong. You know, he's backing into our centre halves, made it awkward for he was, them. He scored an offside goal in the first half. Yeah, as he was well. offside. He was way offside with that, to be fair. But no, I think if you put him maybe in a good team, if he's got 13 goals in a side who perhaps don't have a lot of possession, um, you know, they're, they're scrapping each game and he, he's top of the pile. Yep. So, you know, I'm sure there are other teams in the league who are possibly looking at him as well. Listen, I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and say who we are going to be looking at in the window. Um, I think if you're looking at us at the top end of the pitch, you've got Ross Stewart, who's on 11 now, I think, in the league. Um, you've got Broadhead, who's firing. But if one of those gets injured, where are we looking then? You've obviously got Kim Pioca, you've got Will Harris coming into it, Aidan O'Brien. It's, it's where they're looking at. Um, we might be looking at other departments at this moment in time, depending where the full-backs are, but that's going down another avenue. But... Uh, I'm sure there's someone that they are possibly having a look at, yeah. OK, we're going to have a look at the scores now from in and around EFL League One this evening. So these are the latest scores, and there's a couple of them, I think, still in play. They're all finished, I've been told. Uh, Accra and Stanley, nil. AFC Wimbledon, two. Charlton, two. Ipswich, nil. Cheltenham, nil. Uh, Cambridge, five. So someone else got the five nil as well. Uh, Cambridge, two. Lincoln, nil. Doncaster, one. Oxford United, two. Fleetwood Town 3, Bolton Wanderers 0, Portsmouth 0, Sheffield Wednesday 0, Botham get 5 again, and this time against Gilliams 1, uh, Wickham 2, Burton Albion 1. Let's see what that does to the league table. Yeah, well, I was just saying we made up that goal difference, but yeah. Rotherham have just uh, scored 5 themselves. But, but that's healthy. Yeah. He no, came in hand on Wickham yeah. and on 39 points in third position. That's where you're going now. The lads will be in there. They'll have looked at the... You've gone through the results, look at that league table, and it just gives you that lift as well. You see it, we're climbing, we're right in amongst it again. You know, after after a good start to that, you know, the first 10, 10 games or so, we were excellent, and then we came away from it. We've had a sticky patch, you know, we, we looked vulnerable, we were shipping goals, and then we're back on it all of a sudden, and look, look where we are. You know, I think there was a few people questioning the manager recently, um, but, you know, even before, before tonight, we're two points off the top of the table, and... We've got a game in hand on, you know, well, we haven't now, have we? Just, just on Wickham, Wickham, really. Just on Wickham and the team below us. So, yeah, we've made those games and, and we've made one count again this evening. I think we're still in a great position and there's still, what, 20 plus, 20 plus games to go, 26 games to go, is there? So, a long way to go. We're not even halfway through, but we're right in amongst it at the top of the table. And that's all we can do. Keep churning out, keep winning the games of football which in front of you. And we've got to look forward to the next one now, but can guarantee you it's them lads that have gone back in the change room tonight. They've seen the table and it gives you a big lift. Yep, let's have a look at another thought from a Sunderland fan. This time it's from Ansi and uh, he says, uh, which one was more important individual confidence boost? Ross's goal or Gucci's assists? Greetings from Finland. Hello, Ansi. Um, I think, uh, well, if you'll ask Lyndon Gooch, yeah, he'll know he made a mistake at the weekend uh, that led to the goal. So he'll have been disappointed, but I think Lind Linden's character I think he, he'll put it behind him as soon as he can and he got back on it and straight away tonight you can see him out on that that left back spot well it was almost like a left winger wasn't he yeah. at times when we had good possession 
He was able to get on the overlap. He was getting forward, and he's had two assists. Um, confidence back in him straight away, and I think Linden comes across to me the type of character. He doesn't let it phase him too much when he makes a mistake. You know, he's, I think he's mid twenties now, isn't he? He's got a lot of games under his belt, um, and he just looks forward to the next one. I think you put the mistake behind you, and you've got to look forward to the next game. And when they're coming thick and fast, I think he does that. And then, obviously, moving on to Ross. Yeah, he's had a bit of a dry spell. But I think what he does do, Ross, even when he's not scoring goals, he contributes to the team. Yep. You can't, you can never knock his work rate for me, Ross. Um, he gets after centre halves. He'll run channels all day, drag centre halves about, which is a nightmare as a centre half. I've said it before. If you come up against a striker who just sticks between the the goalposts or the 18-yard box with his back to goal, you're happy with that. But Ross doesn't. He's a nightmare. He's always on the move. He's always looking to get in behind. And uh, got his rewards again tonight. He's yep. got his goal. Could have had one at the start of the second half where the keeper come out and made a good save. But um, he'll be happy tonight. He's back amongst the goals. Nathan's up there getting the goals as well with him. So, as you mentioned in commentary, Frankie, when, when your strikers are scoring, everyone's happy. You've got clean sheet at the other end and your strikers are firing. Everyone's happy. So, let's hope that continues at the weekend. Absolutely. Let's move on to our next one then. Let's see what this fan has to say. It's from Mark. My eight-year-old asks, what is your best Sunderland goal? Though he is now in bed. Uh, what was your best Sunderland goal then, Danny? So he should be on a school night as well. Yeah, well said. Uh, my favourite Sunderland goal, um, well, I only got the one at the stadium of light against Aston Villa uh, in the Premier League. And uh, yeah, it was a Carlos Edwards wide free kick. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, just got a header over the top of Brad Friedel, I think, caught in no man's land. And Took advantage. Yeah, pretty much a full house down at the, at the south end there, southwest corner. And uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a good feeling. Hairs are up on the back of your neck. And it was one of them. And I didn't get too many at the club. I got one at Villa as well. Um, a couple of seasons before that, but uh, no, that's certainly the one I was after. You know, at the stadium of light in front of a near enough a full house, I think it was, and yeah, it's great and great feeling. Yeah, I'm sure. You know, as a centre half, you perhaps appreciate it more as well, where you don't get too many. Yeah. Um, but no, that one, that one sticks with me. Nice one. Let's have a look at the next one then here on hashtag Ask Danny. Uh, Babyface eighty seven who says, is Billy Wright finally back to his best? He's certainly played well in the last few games, hasn't he? Yeah, he did, and as you mentioned again on the uh, on comms, there he's he's he's, b he's playing in a position. He's being asked to do a job at, at right back. Um, I think obviously you know he preferred to play in the centre of a back two and sorry in a back four in, in one of those centre half berths or in a back three in the middle, but he's asked to go out and do a job at full back. And I think tonight it's one of those games where we knew we were going to have a lot of possession. He, he wasn't asked to defend a lot. You know, if you maybe played him at full back at the weekend up against um, Oxford when they had those quick wingers. Yeah. You know, he wouldn't have thanked you for that probably if they have a lot of ball and, you know, you've got a, dri a man driving at you who's quick in those 1v1 situations, but he didn't have to do a lot of defending tonight. But what he did do, he had to do well. He did make uh, some tackles at times and he timed them well. Um, and he got forward and he helped Diaku out as well. And it, he's, we said it, didn't we? He looked like he enjoyed himself out there. Yeah. And it's 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 the the case at this moment in time where we've got that many players in the treatment room, the, the natural full-backs aren't out there. So Bailey's being asked to do a job. You know, like Lyndon Gooch on the other side, like Doyle's being asked to go out and play at full-back as well. So the lads just get on with it. And that's what you need throughout the course of a season. As we said on, uh, it might have been in the pre-match show or on comms earlier, it, you can go from, looks like you've got a, a nice deep squad, uh, and then two, three weeks later, all of a sudden you've got five or six lads who are in the treatment room and that's how it can happen. And the lads are having to do a job, they're having to come together, dig in, and then hopefully we get to January, we get one or two of the boys back from the treatment table. Um, you know, we spoke to Corey. Yep. Hopefully, he's not too far away. Uh, Didn't sound like it, did it? No, I spoke. I spoke to us. Denver after the game on uh, on Tuesday night. Actually, going out of here. Sorry, on on Saturday it was. Yeah. Um, and he said he's not far off being back out on the grass. So hopefully, we can get boys back, and then the January window opens as well, and they might look to to bring a few fresh faces in as well. But no, I think we've sent a horse with obviously B Bailey's natural position. We're quite well stocked there. Jamashley's uh, was back out there last week as well, wasn't yep. he? Um, so we're, we're okay in the centre half department I think it's the other positions where we need bodies back or we need uh, recruitment OK let's have a look at another one then from Rob who says uh, from zero to hero Lyndon Gooch came in for some criticism from the last fixture we all know he has the talent and he has played at the highest level before what do you think is his best position and should we give him a consistent opportunity in the uh, said position it's hard at the moment, isn't it, because of injuries? And he's such a, uh, you know, he's such a utility player. He can yeah. Go anywhere, and he and he, he'll 
you know, you could ask him to go and goal in, he would He'd go and goal go, for, the, for the club. Yeah, and he's it's just uh, still through and through, isn't he? Well, he is, and he's a hundred percenter, isn't he? You know, he, even if he. He makes a mistake. Yes, he made a mistake at the weekend, and we all make mistakes. You know, players at the top level make mistakes. It happens. You know, everyone's human at the end of the day. But uh, I said there just a minute ago, he gets on with it, Lyndon. Uh, you get some players who might make a mistake and plays on their mind for the next 20 minutes or so, and the crowd can get on top and they go missing. But I think Lyndon puts it to the back of his mind, and he got on with it. And even Saturday, he got moved to left back, and uh, I think he had. I thought he had a good second half at the weekend as well. Yeah, he made a made a mistake where he almost put the lad in at the start of the second half, but. At the same time, he was getting forward well. He was making tackles down here. And it's an un unnatural position for him. It's like me being asked to go and play right wing. Do you know what I mean? It's the other yeah. side of the pitch where his natural position is. And when we spoke to Lyndon on the on the podcast, he said he likes, if given the opportunity, he'd rather play centre forward. Yeah. But he's, he hasn't really had he's many... He's never really done no, that. No, he hasn't, has he? He's played in the 10. <laughs> yeah. He's played um, wide of a, the, the three wings, behind. He's yeah. played on the wings. Um I think when Lyndon's on his game, I'd play him on either flank if you're in a 4-4-2 or, or a natural winger. Um, I think with Lyndon as well, you know early in the first five minutes or so if he's going to be on his game. I think if he if you give him the ball early and he beats his man, his confidence is up. Yeah. If, if he doesn't, maybe the, the, the full-back gets the better of him early on. He gets annoyed with himself. He starts arguing with the, the officials a little bit and stuff, but that's, that's his character. Uh, yeah. That's how he fires himself up, but I think... If you're asking me where would I look to play Lyndon Gooch, uh, a natural winger, put him out on the wing, and hopefully he's on his game and he can get his full-back and get the better of him. Ser serving the box, putting balls in there, as we've seen tonight, yep. two assists. Yep. Gets, he gets that half a yard, he, he's got a low centre of gravity, he can shift it both ways, and he puts those balls in, and as we've seen there, he's got a couple of assists to go home with this evening. Last one now here on Hashtag Ask Danny. This one's from Luke. Luke Olsen, who says, brilliant performance tonight with many players out of natural positions. We've touched upon that. Uh, how do you think the lads will do against what looks to be promotion rivals at the weekend? Now we've got a lot of more confidence going into these tougher games. How are the lads from Luke? Uh, yeah, well, it was, a, you know, it was a good performance tonight and it's one of those cliches ones where that game's gone now. Yeah, it's, it's three points on the board. We've got the five goals. We've got the clean sheet. Got to re uh, recover quick, you know, heavy pitch tonight for some of the boys out there. The pitches are getting heavy and they've uh, got to get ready to go again at the weekend. Interesting to see if there's any bumps and bruises or if he goes again with the same start in 11. We'll yeah. have to wait and see. Um, but he's mentioned they're coming up against tougher opposition. Well, we played Oxford, who were a, a team in form. I think they were, you know, 10, 12 games. Yeah, beat, yeah. I think, weren't well, they? So the start of November, yeah. Yeah, so they, they were going well, Oxford. Um, yeah, coming up against Morecambe this evening. On paper, you expect us to, to roll them over, and we've managed to do that, and convincingly as well. Now you're coming up against Plymouth. They're, they're three, uh, I think they won in the FA Cup at the weekend against Rochdale, but they're coming off the back of three defeats in the league. I think they play tomorrow night, don't they? Yeah, they do. So they're playing tomorrow. So new manager. We, new manager. So that might give them a little, you know, people say it gives them a little lift. I think it's the assistant who took the job. Right. But um, it's another day recovery for us, advantage in a way, really. Yeah. Now they'll go back down to, to they're, Plymouth. They're travelling tomorrow night as well. That's what I'm saying. Yep. So they go back down to Plymouth, and whether I don't think they'll probably fly up to to, to the northeast. I'm not sure, but it's another day of travelling. It's a long old journey, isn't it, from yeah, Plymouth to absolutely. to Sunderland? So um, that that will come into the factor, I think, and you, you take that into your advantage, really, if you can do. Um, but they're still up there. You've got to give them credit. You know, we, people were expecting them, I think, early on to fade away. But they're still right up there amongst it. So um, I think it all comes down to how we perform as well. Yeah. If we start like we do tonight, if we get that early goal, you know, at the weekend we scored within 10 minutes. We scored tonight 12, 13 minutes on the clock. Yeah. Get that early goal, get the crowd up early, you know, get behind the boys and then try and drive home from there. But we've just got to keep chalking the games off. You know, that's another three points. And I said seven out of these three games, that's four. Let's go and get these next three points and let's see how we, uh, how we lie after the weekend. Absolutely, Danny. And you can join us for that if you are watching around the world, uh, not in the UK, uh, because it's a 3 p.m. on a Saturday kickoff. Uh, you can join us from 2.30 on Saturday if you're outside the UK. Go to sfc.com right now for your match day streaming passes when Sunderland take on Plymouth Argyle here at the Stadium of Light. But the headlines are this evening, Sunderland have won 5-0 at home once again. <laughs> 